when you hear about things like the travel ban, do you look at whether Connecticut might have standing? Because some people said it looked like Washington and Minnesota found a way to to argue that they had standing. We, we, we could develop a similar case, but it's just because we don't have kind of glaring, pe you know, you know, people who are who are have been detained in Munich because uh, they can't come to the states, even though they've been working in the states for some. We we didn't have kind of victims on the ground that we could point to in a clear and convincing way. We've we the, the case we would develop would involve, for example, University of Connecticut and the state university system and p people, uh, students or uh, faculty who are in some way compromised. But it, but it, the, the because we don't have an, an international airport, we don't have people that were kind of standing and trying to fly in to to. And it, yes, we do have an international airport in theory, but it's I think limited to uh, to. Uh, Ireland, Ireland, right? I flew to Italy from there. The Muslim country of Ireland, yeah. No, uh, and so, again, having more than one case does not benefit the issue. Uh, and in fact, it could cloud the issue if you had the Second Circuit Court of Appeals at odds with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, it, developing it would be harder to develop a clear case for standing in Connecticut though the same principles would would apply but it's anybody's guess as to how the Second Circuit would react to that but I guess what I'm getting at is if Connecticut if an if it issue came up and not just the travel ban but if an issue came up uh, where mm -hmm. Connecticut did have significant standing would you challenge the oh, Trump yeah, administration yeah. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, could actually yeah. do it because I was talking with a colleague about this earlier uh, Trump differs from presidents in a lot of ways, but one way he differs, I think, as Senator Blumenthal found out, is that we have a president who hits back um, pretty publicly. Yeah, that's that's. And would you be prepared for that? I, I don't. I haven't looked up to see what he did. The, but the, the, the first, the first, in, in addition to the amicus brief that Connecticut filed on behalf in support of Washington State, uh, Connecticut was actually the first state to take legal action on. A Trump-related issue, which was we filed, uh, we were we were denied uh, because it was late in the game. We knew it was a, a chance thing, but um, we led a 16-state coalition, um, and we filed. I think the week after Trump was inaugurated, yeah, Trump has made clear his intention to gut the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which I think turns his back on. The people who elected him. I mean, that's that's siding with Wall Street over Main Street. And he's made clear his intention to fire Richard Cordray, who's the very capable director of the um, of the CFPB. That agency was created to be independent of executive control, and so the the executive director has a five-year term. And there is an there is an ongoing legal action challenging the constitutionality of the executive director having a five-year term, just like the, the FBI has been placed out of politics by giving the FBI director, I think it's an eight or a ten-year term, I forget what exactly what it is. Uh, Trump has made his intentions clear uh, that he wants to fire quarter eight before the five years is up, which is two years from now, and he uh, wants to essentially gut the, the bureau. Uh, Connecticut led an intervention so that we could uh, we, we, we could um, oppose in court what they're doing. Again, we were, not, we were denied permission to intervene, but as, as, in response to your question, yeah, we, we already have done it. And in fact, we're the first to do it.